Okay, fine. I'm like if a guy was a girl was a guy who was actually non-binary. But at the same time, I am a daughter and I am an older sister, but I'm also my father's disgraced son who he doesn't want to acknowledge. Um, at the same time, I'm a really masculine girl, but a really girly boy. But also, I'm just autistic, and I kind of like exist beyond gender. And yet, at the same time, I am kind of every single gender rolled into one. I am a star, but I'm also an itty bitty snail on the ground that you could easily crush. But if you know me, you know I think snails are cute, but I'm not cute. Only in a way where I'm kind of like an itty bitty kitty cat that's super adorable. And yet at the same time, also just kind of like I'm a wounded animal howling on the ground, screaming for help, but you can't really help the wounded animal anymore. There's only one thing you can really do to it at this point. You know what I mean? You're welcome. Here's what your gender says about you. Number one, if you are a boy, you are a boy. Congratulations. Number two, if you are a girl, you are a girl. Number three, if you are per honey. <laughs> Number three, if you are per per honey kitty cat meow boots the house down slay mama queen. You forgot to drink water again today. Wow, how groundbreaking. Number four, if you are a desolate wasteland full of strawberries no human hands will ever touch. You need to tell your friends the boundaries that you have before they cross the boundaries that you have. They can't, you, you're mad about something that they crossed without knowing what it was. I... And finally, number five, if you are 17 erotica novels decrepit inside of an abandoned building, please take care of yourself. Like self-regulate, like do something. A milkshake, go get a milkshake. When was the last time you had a milkshake? Jesus Christ, are you okay? Oh, also you're touch starved. Um, but you know, sort of implied with the gen. Okay, thanks, bye. Why are you still watching this video? So I don't know what's been happening lately, but I've been being clocked as trans a lot more. And I dress like this. I think I dress pretty ambiguous. I just look like a rocker. I got like stopped uh, in rural like Wyoming. And I crashed my car and this, these people were like stopping by to help me. I said crashed. I just slipped off the road with some ice. I got towed. And, like I'm perfectly fine. But I get into this car. Tell me why the first thing they ask. These are like Republican looking like rough and tumble. Like they don't really look like. They go, what are your pronouns by the way? I do not give people she they when they ask for my pronouns and I'm in rural Wyoming. Do not do that. I don't do that. I, I just go, uh, I pretty much go by anything. I say I'm the most girly looking boy and the most boily looking girl that you'll ever meet. But how is this happening? How is it, is it the dyed hair? This doesn't even look like a queer hairstyle. This looks like, this looks like, like I just wanted to have three different hairstyles and I couldn't decide on which one I wanted. So I decided to go for all of them. All of them. And I talk, I, 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 I talk like this. Like maybe like a little more of an accent. Like I've said before, like I enunciate more online because a lot of you guys like genuinely cannot under, understand what I'm saying because I, like, I mumble. I draw my words a little bit. But I think it's so funny. I think it's so funny because this keeps happening. This happens more and more. And yeah, I mean like, yeah, the goal is to present and whatever. I'm in rural like America. This is not the best place to be like clockable as trans. But it's so funny. Ah. Oh, I'm so lucky I can fight. Oh, I'm so lucky I can fight. I have a very serious question for those of you who keep missing my gender. When have you ever met a he, him who looks like this? Huh? She, her, yes, they, them, sure. He, him, who? And if you do know a he who hymns like this, power to him. But the he, hims I know never he the way I, she. So when I present you with she, they so kindly, could you not he, him all over my sleigh? Thank you. The more men that are irrationally angry at you for existing, the prettier you are. Why the fuck she got all that shit on? Why the fuck she do her hair like that? Why the fuck she did her eyebrows green? Thank you! <laughs> we Africans don't claim you. You are brainwashed with the stupid Western ideology. No African has they them put if they aren't royal. So actually, I am royal. 
I don't tell a lot of people these things because I don't want them using me for my money, but I decided to reach out to TikTok for help. So I'm actually a Nigerian prince and my account has been frozen and I just need someone to send me a small sum of a thousand dollars and I will reward you graciously with a million dollars. I love when I accidentally start queer discourse. Yesterday I posted a video where I talked about how frustrating it is when people misgender me as someone who presents femme the majority of the time. A lot of you pointed out how not everyone who presents femme uses she, her, or in my case, she, they pronouns, and some people who use he, him pronouns present femme regularly too, which is a great point, and it brings us to this idea of gender identity versus gender presentation. These two camps are often but not always correlated, which is why it's dangerous to make assumptions. For example, I was assigned male at birth, and most people who are assigned male at birth want to identify as boys and men, but I realized I could not be further from that. I identify as a trans feminine person and therefore my gender presentation is fem. Which is why I was so frustrated in that video because people will see that I have a couple of features typical of someone who is assigned male at birth and then assume that they should use he, him pronouns for me. Even if it's a subconscious assumption, the action can still be quite painful. Now, in spite of a couple of characteristically male features, my gender presentation is almost always fem in the way I dress and the way I speak and the length of my hair, etc., which matches with my gender identity of a trans feminine person, hence the correlation I was talking about earlier. But as many of you pointed out, not everyone's gender identity and gender presentation correlates like that. Some people's only correlates a little bit, or some people's only correlates on certain days, or sometimes, or some people's only correlate never. All of this is to say that making assumptions about someone else's gender identity can be really harmful and hurtful to that person. So how the fuck are you supposed to know what to call people if you don't know their pronouns? Well, for a long time, a lot of folks, myself included, would say you should assume they pronouns if you're unsure. And I still understand a lot of the logic behind this. However, you might meet a woman, for example, who has a lot of character characteristically male features like myself. And if you assume they pronouns for her, it might be really hurtful because she's a woman. She doesn't want to be seen as non-binary. So if you're really unsure, use that person's name, which is probably going to be the most affirming thing for them to hear anyway, until you get a chance to ask them or better yet, ask a friend of theirs what pronouns they use. Because if you take the burden off of that individual to either have to explain to you their gender identity or worse, have to correct you after you make the wrong assumption and instead do the work on your own to figure out what best validates them, it's going to make them so happy. I started my transition in 1988. So I had to tell my daughter, I'm going to change. At first, she was not happy about it. And she goes, I don't want you to do it because you'll grow very tall and I won't recognize you. And I said, well, actually, I'm done growing tall. I'm not going to get any taller you know, you are going to grow very tall. You are going to be much, much taller than you are now. And that change will happen very slowly over time, and we will always recognize each other. So if I go through this change, you will still, it will still be slow and gradual, and we will always recognize each other. They them pronouns are gender neutral, and if you're not sure what someone's pronouns are, it's a safe way to go. But if you're calling just the trans people in the room they them instead of learning their pronouns because you think you're being a good ally and we won't notice, we noticed and you're not. This doesn't really apply if you're using they interchangeably with everybody, but I definitely notice a lot of cis people call everybody they know he or she, and instead of calling a trans person that, every trans person is they. Like, I had this boss that called me he, and then when a couple more trans people got added to staff, suddenly she called all of us they. That's not cool. We noticed that shit. It's like we taught y'all how to use gender neutral pronouns and now you're like, look, look, I'm doing the thing. If you're exclusively calling trans people that don't use they, them, they, them, and I, we notice when you do that, you're signaling that you don't actually want to learn to respect or see our identities in their entirety because just de-gendering all trans people is not respecting our genders. I hate to be the one to break the news for you, but if you know someone's pronouns aren't they, them, and you're continuing to call them they, them, now you are misgendering them. Now you are. I was born a girl. I transitioned into a man. I put on about 200 pounds of muscle mass, and then I went to work at a steel mill. And everybody wants to know, how did I survive? So I essentially was Jane Goodall at the steel mill. Like, I was just was observing the body language. I was observing the interactions. Here's how you carry yourself around a group of men that feel intimidating and uncomfortable and unsafe to you. One, go slow. I don't care what you're doing, how you're doing it, 
go slow walking fast fast hand movements they just read nervous okay even when i do the dumbest things i do them slow say i was at the supermarket and i dropped this i would lean down very very slowly very casually like the laziest lion in the den i would pick it up and i would put it back and i would just go about my business no one knows you're fucking up it's all about the presentation and the perception of who you are and what you're doing when i drop things do i think i'm the worst person on the planet no i'm just like well i dropped it two body language always okay this isn't for like an everyday situation when you're around like women and stuff this is only for when you're around all dudes i want you to spread out as much as you can put your arm across the chair anytime i'm sitting down and there's a chair next to me guess what bitch? i'm pushing the chair out putting my whole arm over it like this and i'm leaning back with my chin up and i'm crossing my legs or stretching them out don't do that around girls because that's rude plenty of ted talks and plenty of other things to show that it's just biologically proven that being spread out is just a, a powerful stance and it'll trick your brain into calming down even if you're really stressed out assume a position that would demonstrate that you're relaxed and your mind will catch up it may not be all the way we'll be at least to the point where you can be in a place of neutrality and also everyone else watching you won't know that you're really nervous number three don't laugh at their shitty jokes if you're with a dude and he's making a joke and you don't think it's funny don't laugh just sit there this goes into my next point you have to become very comfortable with silence because silence is very powerful too the art of not filling space also emanates confidence you don't have to fill the space sit down like i told you spread out and relax that's it just look at him if it was something really offensive or if they were trying to fuck with you all you have to say is what was that can you repeat that and say it real loud watch them squirm that is how you get your energy source when an offensive dumb insecure dude is running his mouth and trying to be funny make your energy source in that interaction making him uncomfortable men of this stature are incredibly insecure they are constantly seeking validation from other men and they want it through laughter they want it through approval of the comment they want it through a nod of the head don't give them any of it and you don't have to explain yourself you don't have to say that offended me you literally have to sit in your own power and your own confidence and look at them and just be like you're a dumb motherfucker. you need to practice being the observer and not the observed the minute you shift that perspective you can calm the down okay i would walk into a room full of 30 dudes did not know any of them did not know squat about a steel mill but you know what i did i would stand and i would put my hands on my hips power stance and i would look at every one of them truly if you're ever in a scenario with a bunch of dudes and they're making you uncomfortable watch how they interact with each other watch who's doing what watch who's kissing ass watch who's demanding the ass kissing watch how it all works and understand the separation between you and them both of those things will comfort you. When you are making eye contact with men, something that I do a lot is I'll tilt my chin a little and I'll nod. And this becomes more of my assessment of them, my evaluation of what's being said to me. You know, turn my head, keep looking, keep nodding. Don't be like, yeah, 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 ha, 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 Don't be doing all that, okay? Don't be jumping to fill the space. Don't be jumping to laugh at them. Yeah, 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 me too. I know, I know, I know. Just. There's plenty more to this. I have so much more to say. Please jump in the comments because I can answer them more specifically. Those are just a couple that I had off the top of my head. But at the end of the day, now for certain, I can tell you that men don't know what the fuck they're doing. No more than anyone else. Men are just a lot better at being performative. I can't tell you how many times I stood in that steel mill with a bunch of other dudes around me and they're all scratching their bellies like confused orangutans, but they're making a shit ton of money. They probably went home and made their wives and kids feel like they were doing the most important job on the planet Earth. When in reality, they were gossiping, they were being homophobic, transphobic, racist, and they were being insecure little children. So just keep that in mind, okay? That helped me face my fears because I really truly thought that I was dumb, I didn't know any better, I didn't have the brain power to learn a new skill. And guess what? I did! I did! I had no problem! That's what I got for you for now. I love y'all. I'll be back with more. Bye. Seems like these days, what someone identifies sets some people off into a bit of a tizzy. What is my gender? Your gender is get a job! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
See, Roseanne used to identify as a comedian. <laughs> The Church of England, Catholicism's cool cousin who lives overseas, announced that they are maybe looking into the idea that maybe they could maybe talk about God in gender-neutral pronouns. The reaction was mixed. You will destroy the church and you will destroy a society who has no faith in anything. Okay. Mm. Oh, absolutely. It is this that will destroy the church. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else to see there. No, no. <laughs> like, let me get this straight. There are Christians out there who are outraged, furious at the very idea that God, an invisible entity without genitals or any other body parts, <laughs> might not have a gender. They can't wrap their heads around it. Immaculate teen pregnancy? Sure. <laughs> a talking bush? Why not? A zombie turning water into wine? I'll have a vodka soda while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, you see, I think... That... There is zero chance you have a valid opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking as someone who recently came out as non-binary, God is going through the typical experience. i got to say, it took until I was 32 to be able to vocalise how I felt because of this type of rhetoric. There's this whole bunch of people out there dying, dying to prove that my experience, my community's experience, is incorrect purely on the fact that they don't care to try and understand. I mean, I don't understand whole parts of straight white male culture. I don't understand cargo pants, but I'm not on the news denying they exist. <laughs> right, so what, what can we do? Nothing. <laughs> don't do anything. You don't really get a say in how someone identifies themselves. You know, least of all, God. <laughs> Between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, God has always been a they. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, my community is going to do what we've always done. Welcome them in. Personally, I'm proud of God. Coming out is hard, no matter how omnipotent you are. <laughs> Congratulations! Can't wait to see you at Pride next month, God. 